So you can see that uh, my um, NFS uh, or NOBFS to be correct failed and I'm pretty sure that this could be uh, to the reason that I don't have a witness disk. Uh, so what I need to do is I'm going to add a witness disk and then try again to see if this is going to resolve this issue. So um, in order for me to add a witness disk I need to configure my failover cluster. So uh, to configure the uh, witness disk for the failover cluster, I'm going to go to more actions on, if you right click on the, your uh, cluster name, go to more actions on, on the right side, you have more actions as well. You can see that I have the uh, configure cluster quorum settings available for me. So I'm going to click next. You can see that I have uh, used the default quorum configuration or select the quorum witness. And I'm going to choose this option. And I'm going to choose configure a disk witness because this is the one that um, I'm I'm lacking at the moment. I don't have a witness. So you can see that you have the option to configure file share witness or cloud witness. So I'm going to choose disk one to be my um, witness disk and click next and finish. And you can see that I have the cluster disk one as a witness disk. So if I go to roles and try to start the role. It failed again. So as the role failed to bring itself online once again, my guess would be that if you remember when you create a failover cluster, that failover cluster will create a cluster name object or CNO into Active Directory. And this looks like a normal computer object if you look into it. But this CNO needs to have permissions to create virtual computer objects or VCO. And I, what I uh, haven't done is to give the CNO, the cluster name object, permissions to create objects into my organizational unit where the um, object is at the moment. So if I go to Active Directory Users and Computers and go to Computers, you can see that this right here is the cluster object, the cluster name object that I've uh, told you about. But this cluster object does not have permissions to create uh, virtual computer objects in this OU. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first uh, add Advanced uh, Features view and then click on the view, click properties and under security for the organizational unit under advanced I'm just going to wait for it to open and under permissions I will need to add permissions select principle under the object types select computer and add NOB course was zero one allow this object and all descendant objects to have list content, read all properties, read permissions, and create all child objects. So I'm going to click OK, OK, and OK once again. So let me see if I switch back to my node zero one if my cluster will be able to bring the role online. So if I click start role, it's going to say pending and running. And if I switch to my domain controller and cl click refresh, you can see that right here I have the NLB FS, which is the virtual computer object that was needed to be created under this OU. So this is an important prerequisite for you to follow if you experience any problems. So this is real life administrator troubleshooting right there. So now, to, now that we resolved one of the hardest problems during this lab, I'm going to continue with creating the um, and continuing to uh, create my uh, share, highly available share. So what you need to do and what you want to do is you want to add the um, new share uh, through the um, new share wizard in the failover cluster manager, not anywhere else. Um, if you want your share to be highly available, you need to use uh, the um, new share wizard in here. So uh, let me just find that bad boy. Add a file share. 
right here. So it's going to run a bit. And when this small verification finishes, you can see that I have the new share wizard right here where I can uh, continue to configure my failover cluster share. So what I want to do is I'm going to, uh, you have few options of course, you have SMB shares, quick, advanced, application shares, NFS shares if you're not using Windows of course, uh, to make highly available storage solution for um, operating systems like uh, Unix, Linux or any, any under others of course. So uh, I'm going to choose the SMB share quick this time. I'm going to choose next. For selection I'm going to choose the NLB FS and I'm going to choose next. And in the share name what I want to do is I am going to create my uh, marketing share marketing share right here and you can see that uh, I have the remote path for uh, for to the share I have the local path to the share which is on my F drive at the moment um, I can add share description if I need to so I uh, in the next window we, ha we have several available options for us enable access based enumeration basically what this does is is going to hide any folders that users does not have permissions on so if a user that does not have permissions on the marketing uh, finance part it's not going to see this folder at all there are a lot of, a lot of other features as well i'm going to just stick to the um the the, the default settings and i'm going to uh, click next and uh, i'm going to uh, leave the permissions as well um, or what i can do is i can add any specific uh, users in here if i want to but i'm going to click next and just uh, create the share so it completed the wizard straight away and i already have my uh, highly available share and you can see under here if i go to my f drive i can see shares and marketing which is nice. So the next step uh, I want to check of course if you want to uh, to check and configure is uh, you can go to the uh, properties of the um, of the NLB FS role and you can configure your preferred owners for this share so if you have uh, you can have more than two nodes in my case I have only two you can add which of the node is the preferred uh, node for example you know that this server is uh, better working it's uh, better um, you can trust it better and you can configure this node to be the preferred owner of the of the role of this cluster role or you can add many servers to be preferred owners but you can switch them uh, by up and down and make them uh, for example my node 2 can be the first preferred owner from the list so I'm going to leave this and um, so we, we can make, we can test it to see if my uh, node 02 is the preferred owner when it comes to failover. Uh, on the next step, failover, you have few options in here, but pretty much this is a uh, deep dive into failover clustering and designing and how to configure things. I want to make these things simpler, but you can see that uh, you can configure failback from here. What this means is, for example, if my share is on node 1 and node down, uh, node 1 becomes um, unavailable for some reason the share will switch back to, it will uh, fail over to um, node 2 but for example when my node 1 is back online this option will fail the share back to to the original location of course this could uh, mean some small downtime for the users so depending on your environment I uh, would say that it's always good to perform manual fallbacks on the roles. So I'm going to leave this like this and click OK. And um, it's time for us to finally, finally, finally test and see if my share is highly available. And what will happen if um, my node 1 as the cur current owner is switched off, for example by uh, my newbie colleague administrator. 
So in order for us to prepare for the actual test, what I'm going to do is right now on I'm on my Windows 10 client machine and on this client machine I want to map a network drive for my user uh, which is going to uh, use this network share to access uh, the uh, important uh, shared uh, files that uh, she's using. So I'm going to add the network share which is um, let me see, uh, it was NLB FS shares marketing. Let's see if this is the, uh, the correct path. So I was mistaken and I had to pause the video again and check what's the uh, name of the share that I've configured. It's NLB FS marketing and click OK and now you can see that straight away the uh, share is available. Well silly me, uh, but things happen, I forget things. So um, my colleague will start working under the share, she's going to create some folders and create some files and for example she's going to work with uh, Microsoft Word document and this document is really important um, so you know that for end users the um, Word documentation and Excel documentation is really important so they are constantly saying that they uh, don't have let me just make the, okay so they are constantly saying that their Excel experience or Outlook experience or Word experience is not great enough so you need to fix it well um, for example uh, maybe she's writing or he's writing something into, into Word and so we need to see what will happen when my, as I said, newbie administrator tries to shut down one of my nodes by mistake for maintenance and we'll see if the user will experience any problem saving the document or, or um, working with the document when the share is actually down. So um, you can see right here, if I go to my failover cluster settings, that currently the share, um, the virtual uh, computer and object is uh, stored and it's currently owned by NLB node 01. So I'm going to shut down uh, NLB node 01 and we'll see how the failover cluster will react and we'll see what will happen from uh, the client side. So. I'm going to just straight away power off the node and this is now down and if I stay a bit here and if I refresh the settings I will see that uh, the connection will drop so I will go to my second server open my failover cluster manager and we'll wait for this bad boy to open and I'm going to go to the nodes and see that node 1 is down. The row that is my FS has switched to node 0 2. What about on the client side? The share is still available. I can create a new document as well. New folder for example. Okay. You can see that the share is now available and it's still available even that my file server 1 is down at the moment. So you can see that this is, this is a good thing to have if you want a highly available service. And Microsoft provides this into building into the Windows Server 2016 as well, which is a thing that uh, most administrators should look into. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to power on my um, node 01 and we'll see if it's going to automatically uh, start up once again. I'm going to switch the uh, row back on the uh, node 01 which is going to uh, make a failback. Yep, you remember correctly, a failback. So we can see this time I've uh, looked into the um, over cluster manager to see if the role will switch but this time I'm going to shut down the server completely and will straight away work with the share to see how much downtime will the user experience in general so you can see after my server is uh, running once again it's going to join back to the cluster 
which is great. You don't have to do anything, except if you have, uh, for example, a server or two servers failed at the same time. In my two node failover cluster, this will mean that the cluster will be down, so you will have downtime. So you can see that the role is still the owner of the role is node 2. I'm going to perform a failover to my node 0 1 and you can do the failover from here or you can do the failover from CMD or PowerShell if you like. So I'm going to click OK. It's going to uh, say that it's pending at the moment and running on node 0 1. What about the client? If I go to the share I will refresh and you can see that there is a small delay but not that bad so I'm going to save the document and I'm going to open a new document or the second document this time and what I'm going to do is I'm going to power off the server once again I know that this is not a good idea to bring on servers and power them off and bring them on but this is for you guys I'm doing everything for you so now I'm going to power off the server once again and I'm going to write something to the document for example I'm saving and you can see that there is some downtime or the user will not suspect any downtime unfortunately this is the time where the cluster is going to bring the role on the second node so this is the only downtime that, or anything that they will experience in general if I try to create a new document it will create the document on the share and that's it if I switch to my second node you can see that the NLB FS is now running on node 0 2. So this proves that the failover clustering in Windows Ter Server 2016 is much much better. Microsoft implemented a lot of improvements to uh, improve the end user experience when it comes to failover and failback when a node fails in your configuration. So, in general, this is how you configure failover cluster and how you configure a highly available file services and a file share. And we looked into what is the experience from the client side. Of course, I want to add a huge note right here that this is a, a pretty much a high overview of what you can do with failover cluster. Failover cluster is a deep technology, deep dive technology that you need to spend a lot of hours working on to get familiar and to get everything known. So this was Nick from NLB Solutions. Thank you very much for viewing. If you like the videos, you can always subscribe to my channel. I'm going to produce some more videos in the next few days. So stay tuned and be amazed.